you're like painting this weird view of Adam that is not at all real, like not realistic at well, all. Number one, of what Adam we talk is about on our show at all. We constantly criticizing the right on our show, much to a lot of right wingers in our audience getting mad at us. We lose. We've like when we cover the January 6 hearings, I think we probably lost like 500 or 1000 live viewers permanently from our audience. I don't know why we're arguing about like Adam doesn't do enough to complain about like the right, which is not even remotely true. Again, I don't agree with vilifying conservative voters on number number one and is a general practice. Well, right? you're telling me again, I don't I do it enough. So I think a good place to start this discussion is probably to ask everyone, you know, do you think all or even most right wingers are greedy racists? No. No. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think so. I guess we're ending the show. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. That was great. Cool. We did it. Cool. I think some people will actually object to that. So obviously. But uh, yeah, so I don't. It, greedy. Is it the the grifting? I don't necessarily labels that got thrown at them. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they use this stereotype because they're super tri tribalistic. So they view they like to vilify, obviously, conservatives. I mean, well, they do fair, believe like, it. everybody is pretty tribalistic. Yeah. Do you think that's something well, that's that, exclusive to the left or? This is the thing we're not, we're not, I, I disagree that everyone is tribalistic. Like we try not to be tribalistic and that's one of the reasons why we kind of get this label <laughs> as right wing podcast because we don't vilify conservatives and therefore everybody assumes that we are conservatives. Like I was going to ask who is the conservative on this panel? Because I, I'm not a conservative. I'm a liberal. Yeah. So I, when I said everybody's like, I mean like all like political factions are kind of like that yeah, yeah and i would argue that you're still tribalistic in the sense that you just caused like you 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 know painted broad aspersions with a broad brush against the progressive left so i think that clearly your analysis like you have tribalistic tendencies too no right? i don't none no. i think i think there are plenty of there are plenty of progressive plenty of liberals that don't use the greedy racist stereotype so but i do think just, a lot of them do yeah okay but, you know, I, I think we both agree that um, on the left and the right, the number one lens at which everyone looks at the world is through tribal tribalism first. I'm not just saying that that's just the left. Obviously, the right does that just as much. Um, but we can move on to the specifics of this topic, if you want, Cherry. Well, I, I, I have one question with respect to this topic, then. Okay. If you think that tribalism is something that's ubiquitous, it's on both sides of the aisle, mm -hmm. and you... Well, let me ask you. You said that you don't consider yourselves conservative or right wing does that mean you consider yourselves left wing or what what do you consider yourselves we're enlightened centrist we're taking the label back baby we're, we're taking yeah, enlightened it we're look yeah. that's hard that's okay. hard to define because a lot of people think of centrist as like fence sitter i don't think of it that way i think commonly people have uh, political positions that are both on left and right are centrist. A lot of people call themselves center right because they have more right wing positions than left wing positions. A lot of people call themselves center left because they have more left wing positions than right wing positions. So I don't necessarily see it as fence sitting because obviously like I'm pro choice, I'm pro progressive taxation. Like I'm not sitting on the fence on any of these topics. So I'm willing to. And is it, is it the case? every progressive or left-wing view you have you have a corresponding right-wing view like do you is it like one-to-one -one or do you think you have a chart or? yes we're not allowed yeah. to have left-wing views unless well, this is, a, this is a why a i was going to say that's equally matching i think it's more accurate to call us team truth because we're more interested in what the truth is and a lot of times political perspectives get in the way of deciphering what actually reality is so that's why we try to avoid the tribalism I saw on Twitter earlier that I think I, it was in response to Brianna Wu or something like that when she said, if you did a survey of all your tweets, your content, do you criticize the left or the right more? So you said the left, Adam, I think. So if you're team truth and you spend more time fixated on, I guess, critiquing the dishonesty of the left, do you think the left is more dishonest than the right? Well, I, I, I feel that since I am on the left, I'm more triggered by the left doing this because they're literally making me look bad. Like when Michael Knowles does something insane, I think, oh, thank God I'm not a conservative. That guy's in, a lunatic. But when someone on the left does something insane, I think, oh man, this makes me look terrible. So that's why I spend more time criticizing people on the left. When Brianna Wu says something 
wacky on our on our uh, show, it makes me think, oh, this makes the left look bad. Gotcha. Well, I'm a bit confused, honestly, because I, I thought you said centrist earlier and then you said you're on the left. But, you know, I understand that these labels can be they're not even necessarily mutually exclusive. So I won't, you know, pin you down on that. So if you want to go ahead, Cherry, with um, the topic, we can move on. And, I'll, and then I'll suss out as the conversation goes mm -hmm. where I think Adam and Sitch are politically. So you're going to label yeah, sure. us? I thought, well, uh, okay. No, well, I you gave you gave me two labels. Interesting. interesting. So don't worry about the topic. Yeah. I think it's important to really hash out, I guess, your concerns about um, someone considering themselves a centrist, right? And I think it's important for Adam, too, to have his politics, his political leanings understood and not just okay. implied or assumed. I'm for I'm for maximizing individual freedom. That's why I consider myself a liberal. I I consider liberalism as the pursuit of individual rights, trying to do this balancing act of making society cohere and and giving the individual as much personal autonomy as possible. So that's kind of where my political leanings are. So I have to examine each individual case doing this balancing act of you know, is this going to be good for individual rights? Is it going to make society collapse? Is it going to be the end of Western civilization? So that's kind of the way I look at things. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh. helpful. Like I said, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I don't have much experience with you. I've listened to some of your shows. I think we've, I think I've commented on some of your stuff on Twitter. We've had some back and forth. I think I actually had a back and forth. Now I'm thinking about it with Sitch. Uh, it was, I was going down memory really? lane about some more news and Cody Johnston about Jordan Peterson. I was oh, the that guy. Was you? That, that was me, was buddy. Insane. Oh yeah, my God. That, How that, could that was you me. That? that was that oh, was me. No. Uh, big Cody Johnston simp. But uh, oh God. Yeah, yeah. Don't hold it against it's me. Throwing uh, up in my mouth right now. Uh, I know. I'm surprised actually, Adam, that you didn't mention uh, Cody Johnston and some more news in in the tweet that kind of set all this off because I figured. I imagine Johnson has to be harsher on conservatives than somebody like David Pakman. Sure, yeah, I I should edit that tweet. I don't think I can after 24 hours. I, so. Do a lot of people? I feel like do a lot of people know about Cody Johnson? Because I feel like David Pakman's like a bigger name, and Cody's kind of like in this kind of weird space of second. I feel tier like some more news is pretty popular now. Okay, I mean, unfortunately, but yeah, he's huge. I should have thrown him in there. No, good catch, good save there. Oh, well, there you go. That's my contribution to your tweet right there. I want I some do. credit when you edit it. <laughs> okay, listen. Listening? Josiah does not relate, does not super understand who Adam is, but uh, Destiny, wouldn't you relate, even though it's your editor who referred to Adam and Sitch as right-wing hosts? Do you kind of relate to people just <clears throat> assuming that you're a conservative in disguise? Uh, yeah, I mean, it happens. I, for me, I'm like, I'm less interested in the political labels. And I just go by policy positions. There's people accusing me of being like a conservative or whatever. I'll just say, sure. And then just like talk about the issues. I think it's kind of the, the, cause the political labels are, they don't very neatly map onto a lot of our beliefs these days. So rather than try to obsess over like who's conservative, who's liberal, who's whatever, I just say, you know, whatever. Do you think it's easier to grow a platform from that perspective? I mean, you already have a huge platform and you grew it as a loud and proud progressive. Hmm. Did I grow it as a progressive? Um, I mean, my beliefs align with progressives, but I, I feel like most of my platform growth has come, I think generally because people appreciate my independence. Um, I, I think most of my major political growth has happened in, in that time. Because I, I think like if you just, because if you wanted to just watch a progressive, I don't know why you would watch me over like say Hassan, because Hassan is gonna give you better or more consistent progressive takes probably um, than I will, because I'm gonna have a lot of takes whether it's Rittenhouse or self-defense or property rights or anti-riots or whatever, that are probably going to fall outside the scope of what a lot of progressives online will advocate for. So I think it just kind of depends. But isn't but, that, don't you differ on those positions because the progressives are getting the facts, the facts of the situation incorrect and you are more interested in following the facts? Yeah, but that's just explaining why then I, I, I don't know if I necessarily identify strongly as a progressive, like come here to, for progressive takes. Because um, if you come to me just for progressive takes, you're probably going to be a little bit disappointed a lot of the time. Well, I, I've just, I feel, I've been watching you for a long time, obviously, and I feel like you have moved more towards kind of understanding the right wing and and not really straw manning their arguments. And, and like, I do see you as kind of a force for good in the space in doing that. So, but I do feel like there was a time when you were less, 
maybe less considerate of other people's political beliefs so um yeah i mean like i definitely have taken um a really hard turn towards trying to be empathetic towards people for sure yeah um and then yeah i do come off as like very empathetic towards conservatives usually because i'm treating them like children but yeah i mean that's <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's been kind of like my stated explicit political goal as of recently is to be that, you know. I mean, I think you can take empathy too far, like, you know, Mr. Girl and stuff like that. But I do like that you are, you are uh, empathetic of the, some of the conservatives, definitely not the greedy racists. I think obviously none of us are in favor of them. But there are plenty wait, of... Are the, what is, wait, wait, I feel like there's a tweet or something I missed. Who are the greedy racists? Well, do you disagree that a lot of progressives have this stereotype of conservatives as greedy racists? So when you say, when they say oh, yeah, right for wing... yeah, sure, they do. They yeah, do. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, this is, but I mean, conservatives do the same towards like progressives as calling them like fucking groomer child molesters. Sure, <laughs> totally, Marxist, totally they do. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. the, I think the greedy racist stereotype is more pervasive on the, on the left. But you do have on the right... I don't, I completely admit Wait, wait, they're... compared to the groomer narrative on the right? Yes, yeah. Oh, that's just absolutely, completely not true. Okay, well, convince It's me. become like a, well, I mean, like, if you're not convinced already, like, I, I feel like the groomer narrative has literally become like the de facto unifying position of the entire conservative party right now. Maybe not even necessarily because they hate LGBT people or whatever, just because they have literally nothing else to talk about. Like I'd also well, well, hold, hold on a like second. How many different? Oh God, yeah. I just want to, there's a, there's a difference here. Okay. There is, mm -hmm. I don't deny that they're calling people on the left groomers, but they don't mean pedophiles. Some of them are off, obviously do mean pedophiles. I do think when people on the left are, are calling, are using the greedy racist stereotype of people on the right, they mean that they are greedy racist. Like they believe I, they- When they use the I, word wait, wait, groomer, you don't think they're trying to signal like-, yeah, like you No, think, I, I think some the groomer are. word is 100% equivocation. It is 100% equivocation. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they picked the word groomer and there's a reason why they focus on school children. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I, 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 would, I, don't, I don't, yeah. Well, I was going to say, I, I would think... also point out to Destiny's point, I think that when we're talking about like an exchange of insults, for me, it also makes a difference that I feel like Republicans who actually wield state power are also more likely to throw these insults at the opposition. Like, I don't hear Joe Biden going around referring to, you know, other Republicans as racist per se, but I do hear Republican leaders, like even I think Marjorie Taylor Greene does it all the time, and she's the de facto Speaker of the House, wait, 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 referring wait. to people as groomers and Marxists and communists and so forth. So. I mean, wait, didn't, didn't Joe Biden literally, his his first campaign ad when he ran against Trump originally, wasn't it him? He had the clip of Trump, you know, supposedly calling the Charlottesville people fine people. Yeah. And equating that with Trump supporting white nationalism. So I don't know how you can say that, like, Joe Biden is not calling people on the right races. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's these, to try to equate these two things is insane. So Trump stating that there were good people on both sides was absolutely a fucking wild and insane statement to make at a rally where people are literally carrying tiki torches that was that was trump's quote um okay but wait wait when trump immediately when he says that and then he immediately says i'm not talking about those people i'm talking about the people protesting the statues taking down the statues and you could say that was a stupid thing to say because i agree with it but obviously when joe biden puts that up there without the clarifying comment he's trying to associate trump's support is a white nationalist base so you can't say Joe Biden is not throwing the racist label at Trump or well, wait, hold on. Well, we're not arguing whether or not he's throwing the racist label. You can well, that's argue what he just, he that's what Pondering just said. He said, I've never heard Joe Biden say well, that. Well, I, what I, I, just, I think what I said is that it's fair to, to say that. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Wait, well, I was I'm just going to say, I don't think that it's something that Joe Biden habitually does. I'm sure you can find, like you just cited an example of what, two or three years ago in a campaign ad. And I'll take you at face value there can because just I do don't it recall. Recently? I could have sworn. It, but... If you can find, if you can he find recent speech examples about the MAGA of... Republicans, what do you think he was talking about? I I did well, actually, he went out of his oh way to clear. Wait a minute, he went. <laughs> yeah, but hang on. The, the problem with that particular quote, and see, that's so funny to me because, what? to me, this this is indicative of like a, a broader hypocrisy that I think is baked based into your like or baked into your worldview. So, number one, that particular quote when in that speech from Independence Hall. Joe Biden went out of his way repeatedly to say, not all Republicans, not all Republicans, right. not all Republicans. And Just then, of the course, MAGA Republicans ones. lied. Number one, Republicans then lied about it. All Republicans, Joe Biden is tarring and feathering all Republicans, number one. And number two, he was referring to, you know, that fascistic substrain of MAGA Republicans who, you know, want to overturn elections and rewrite democracy in order to install Trump, God Emperor, as an unelected dictator. That's perfectly fair to call out. 
what what was wrong with what he said so to be clear because i you said that something wrong with our worldview um because i don't think you understand it but that's fine <laughs> this was part of the conversation could be about because we actually watched that speech and i said literally the same thing saying that like yeah there's a lot of uh you know rhetoric that a lot of people on the right will that will get pissed off about but he did try to clarify in that in that statement that he wasn't saying everyone and he was trying to narrow in on trump so i said all those things right so i don't disagree with that what i disagree with is the characterization that you're kind of putting out here which is you know i agree that with adam that originally when the groomer label came out it was kind of like wishy-washy about what it meant i agree that now it has completely been dominated by the accusation of sexual impropriety towards children i am completely against using the groomer label for that reason now and i do think it's widely overused and i do think it's gross but i don't i think you have to accept um, that it is like a common old as dirt tactic, at least for the last 20, 30 years in politics, for the Democrats to associate Republicans as being racist, and especially recently that has been kind of the go-to move. And it's weird for me to hear that you're saying that that's not the case. Well, I, you, I'm not... Before you reply to him, one second, I just want to be clear that this isn't a 2v2 debate. Um, I know Adam and Stitch are going to be defensive. They do a show together, and it's their image together that's being challenged. By, uh, by no means are Josiah and Destiny on the same team or anything, so everyone can speak for themselves, okay? Oh, we are on the same team. We, we, can, we canvassed together in Georgia, too. baby. We, we were canvassing in that Warnock runoff election. Adam and Sitch, you can actually thank Stevens canvassing Shut for the, the reason the Democrats, that Democrats that oh, Democrats still have a majority in the Senate. You can thank this man right here. Well, there you go. Destiny yeah. did it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he did. Single-handedly. Yeah. yeah. I think that was math math mathematically proven, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where were we? <laughs> well, but listen, I don't think anybody here is denying the fact that uh, there are there's a large. I mean, I don't know what the percentage is, but intuitively, I have to imagine a considerable number, particularly on Twitter, of outspoken progressives and leftists are quick to tar and feather the other side. And I do agree that that's common. I'm just saying among Democratic power players, I don't think like I think the 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 groomer label is cast with more recklessness and more frequency by Republican leaders than the word racist at Republican uh, at Republican rank and file people by Democrats. That's my position. That's my understanding. Maybe you disagree. I, I disagree. Well, I, but I, go I, ahead. I think it's perceptually just because the racist label has been thrown for so long that we've kind of grown accustomed to it and it's lost a lot of its power. Do you so think, therefore, well, it, it, let, I agree. I agree that, that that word has been thrown around a hell of a lot more in terms of, like, the political zeitgeist than uh, groomer. But I guess my question would be, do you feel that Democratic leaders still use that word to describe Republican voters with the same frequency that you think they used to? Or do you think that it's comparable? Well, you, you, well, you keep bringing it to the Democratic leaders. I don't have offhand. I don't remember every Democratic politician that's that's made that claim. I do know that it's a common, oh, it is no. a, I know it's a common thing that is in almost constantly in all these news articles is trying to paint it this way, trying to frame it this way. Well, Hillary's deplorable speech. She, she's actually called them racist in that. So I don't know. That's kind of big. Do you remember <laughs> what the exact quote was with the basket full of deplorables there? Because again, I don't think she was racist, referring to all Republicans. Racist, sexist, homophobe. She said, like, I'm just going to look this up in real time. She said 50% of the Republican Party. I mean, you can look it up. I'm just going off of memory, but I'm just saying that's like a pretty big thing. I think it cost her the election, too, as well. I don't think it was good might politics. also be James Comey announcing that he's, you know, reopening the email investigation, Russia's interference, probably a confluence of factors there. Um, yeah, you know, just to be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables, right? They're racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. Yeah, there you okay, go. So okay, so that— 50 yeah. percent of the Trump supporters. Of, tr of Trump supporters. So that's supporters. 35 million people, right? Se 70 million people voted. That's a lot of people. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, let me ask a question, just because what you guys are saying is uh, bringing up a memory, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but did Mitt Romney have a similar situation with a 47 percent? Hell Number yeah, he, he did. did. Yeah, that he referred he did. to. Okay. Yeah. What did he Romney was Democrat say? when he said it? Yeah. He said something about. 40, he said forty percent. He was percent using that was the lazy and shiftless. Or to uh, vote. Yeah, that was so the lazy and shiftless stereotype of, of people on the <laughs> left, right? I don't think it was a laziness. I think he was. Uh, oh, I remember. I no, I remember that and, quote oh, okay. rather specifically. It was definitely about laziness yeah people who don't want to work people who don't want to do anything yeah for he basically said all of uh 
all of Democrats were lazy, which was also bad politics, horrible politics. Okay, so well, I guess just to move the conversation along, I, I will accept that there have been leaders on both sides of the aisle to cast, like, again, wide aspersions at either the political opponents of the other side or their supporters, okay? I guess, what's the what's the next step? Um, is it just that you see it more on the left than the right? Or I'm not exactly sure where we're going with well, the conversation. Well, I think it's well, bad. But wait, 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 wait. So you, so you accept, because I feel like I'm being kind of like gaslit here. You accept that, like, calling the right racist is pretty a common tactic that we see in media, right? Like, I mean, just look it up. Like, there's an article I, the other day, you know, accusing uh, Ramaswamy of, like, trying to throw racist uh, d racist red meat to the Republican Party. There's the famous article, like, the blackface of white supremacy that was thrown out against uh, black Republican politicians. Every single person was calling Clarence Thomas, you know, the C word because of his position in front of action. I just, I don't know how you can deny this. Uh, well, I, I didn't deny that. Again, I, I think I even said there there is an outspoken contingent on the left, which, uh, again, will insult uh, the like supporters on the right or right leaning politicians and use the racist word. I, I don't think I've denied that. Okay. And if that's what you if that's what you took from it, let me just be very emphatic. The word racist has been lobbed by progressives and people on the left against their political opponents for decades. Okay. Well, also Fair from enough. big establishment media, too, as well, like CNN, right. you couldn't go five minutes without them them making those accusations the new york times probably has a half dozen articles making those accusations like big uh five minute comment left wing. is a stretch adam what's that you can't go five minutes yeah well uh, on cnn they commonly said you couldn't go five minutes without listening to cnn without someone saying trump praised neo-nazis which makes the assessment that anyone who votes for trump or is a trump supporter is basically in favor of someone who would support neo-nazis so i don't know how you can't call that person a racist do you think I, there's anything well, wait, real quick. okay so the, i do agree that these labels get thrown around too much and it ends up being a little bit damaging but i also think there's a weird game that happens where because they get thrown out too much and because they are damaging when they're thrown out too much people act like you can't use them ever like i get really triggered when we talk when people get really upset about that mega um the MAGA conservative thing that biden said it is a fact that there is a like I, I sound I hate to use this word, but there is a like fascist swell, swell that exists under Donald Trump. But there are people that are desiring a single leader to overthrow the American, like republic. Like that that's undeniable. Now I don't know how else to say that. There are no nice ways or nice words, but like that is true. It's also true that Donald Trump said that somebody couldn't preside on a court case because his parents came from Mexico. It's also true that Donald Trump is on record asking Giuliani how he can ban Muslims from entering the United States, right? I agree that these racist labels get thrown around too often, but I feel like sometimes people run a little bit too much cover for conservatives by saying they're thrown around too often, when sometimes conservatives are acting in ways that need to be called out, especially yeah, two, in regards to Two things can be true simultaneously, and I, I'm sure you would both agree, I hope, and I would like to ask if you do agree with that, that simultaneously progressives can be at times cavalier with the word racist, and yet sometimes conservatives can, can be, racist. be racist. Yeah, we, we yeah. Look, and we no, call out wait, racist. Wait, 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 wait. Hold wait, on, wait. let me just finish. Me, okay. we, we call out racist right. all the time. We we debate racist. We, I fucking can't stand racist okay and a lot of people you know i feel like people will play this game like they're just joking around and i think these people are legitimately racist when we call them out our audience gets upset about it they say the same thing you're talking about destiny i totally agree with you they're like oh you know you're being too harsh on them adam and i'm like they're they're it's so obvious what's going on here they're gaslighting the shit out of me this person's a fucking racist so i i look i agree with you we but it waters down the term when you're calling somebody who you know accidentally, you know, did an uh, a inconsiderate joke and has not shown any sign of racism in their entire life. You're trying to cancel them as a racist. Like let's I save think, it I, for the I, people I think, who are legitimately well, racist. Yeah, let's. Agreed. I think I think that when you're talking about um, you know that the the term this is part of what we talked about why it's dangerous to throw on the term racist racist and fascist so liberally or freely is that it does it creates the cry wolf syndrome where then when you actually have someone being racist or being authoritarian no one will listen to it anymore and i and i and we are afraid and i and i am bothered by a lot of things that trump did regarding trying to get the states to overthrow the slate of electors and all these things and then i think that all this happens and the reason that there is or not the whole reason but a big reason why there is this fervor behind trump and behind this you know destroy all the institutions destroy the deep state and all this stuff is because 
the overuse of these terms, the overuse of the attacks on Donald Trump, the second he became president, he was attacked for every single thing. When he literally, when he had enough flaws, enough things that were realistic to attack, but if you attack him on everything, even when he doesn't deserve it, the people just lose faith. They don't believe in anything in the media. They think everything's corrupt. And that's what opens the door, in my opinion, for people to kind of turn to Donald Trump and say, hey, we do need this strong man to kind of come in here and wipe everything out because nothing can be trusted at all. Yeah, I don't think, again, I don't think we disagree with it. We just, but we also have to be able to call them out, like, when it happens. And also sure. to say that that's not justified. When we, we might be able to understand the reactions of some people in Trump's orbit, it certainly doesn't excuse it. Oh, they were mean to Trump, therefore it justifies his attempts to overturn the election. There's like a, there's a, a chasm between these two things, yeah, but it's, which it's needs weird. to be called out. It's, it's interesting that, and I don't know if you're accusing me of this or you're just pointing it out. That whenever I say what I just said, people turn to the justification thing. I'm not saying anything's justified. I'm just explaining, like, the process of which this happens descriptively. It's obviously not justified. Sure. Well, okay. Well, full disclosure, and this goes back to, I guess, again, the, the tweet, which was, you know, at least on paper, you know, the predicate for this conversation. When it was brought to my attention, I, I remember when Cherry sent me the, the, the tweet and asked for my take on it, I was like, I'm really not married to the idea of just demonizing conservative voters for a few reasons. Number one, I'm not entirely sure it's efficacious. Number two, I grew up, I was born in a red rural state. I grew up in a red rural state. I would say 60 to 70% of the people in my orbit in my life, including my sisters, are all conservative and Republican voting. I don't vilify them. I don't hate them. As a matter of fact, not only do I think that they've been deceived and radicalized by bad faith actors who should know better, I think that they're the victims very often of shitty Republican policy because Republican policy is shitty. If you look at the poorest, least educated, most federally dependent states in this country, nine out of 10 of them virtually are Republican led. So I don't think it's right to just say if you're conservative or if you vote Republican, you know, you're an ontologically evil piece of shit or anything like that. But I also think just it depends delusional. on who you're. Well, it's sure. In part. I mean, you're, you are painting a picture of someone who's second, delusional. Adam. So, but go I'll, ahead. I'll let you, Adam, I'll let you pick it up. But I just want for everybody listening in to be able to hear the tweet that brought us together. So this sure. was tweeted from Adam's account. Oh, I, I brought it up. Yeah, oh, I was going to read thing. it. Adam, read it. Oh, do you want to no, read it, No, no. Yeah, go read ahead, it. Cherry. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're a better Okay, reader. well, the tweet. It's ironic that most of the political pundits who want big, big change, like Hassan Vosh Majority Report David Pakman, spend all day vilifying the people they will have to win over to achieve that change. You can't get big things done without the support of conservative voters. If you really want things like higher wages for the working class or universal health care, it's dumb to demonize conservative voters just so you can grow a progressive platform. Stop actively criticizing Wall Street for its fixation on short-term gains while you do the exact same thing with your own social media accounts. Oh, man. Go ahead, Adam. What that's a great amazing. Tweet. Who wrote that? That's, that's <laughs> look, I'm, I have a tear in my eye. So, so uh, you, uh, it sounds like you agree with that because you're saying it's not effective to demonize him. Look, I, look what you just said, I... And this is why I'm constantly being confu uh, confused with a conservative or being accused of being a conservative because I speak conservative. I have conservative friends and I can hear what you're saying from their perspective. And I, I think this is why we have a lot of conservatives in our audience, even though every single one of those conservatives knows that we're dirty, dirty liberals. They, they listen to us because we have respect for them. And everything that you said comes off as conservatives are childish, are, are childish, stupid, naive, delusional people who constantly vote against their own interests. It's like uh, the what was the pro the what's the problem with Kansas uh, movie just downloaded from your brain right into this live stream and everyone could pick up on it. Everyone knew, everyone was like, this you guy know doesn't understand me. You know what's hilarious about that? And, and and I guess the first thing I'd want you to do is tell me what am I wrong about, number one. But number two, there again, this goes to the strange double standard, I think, which is baked into your worldview, which is— What, what is my you're worldview? You're upset. Wait a minute. Which, well, let me finish. So you, you're you seemingly outraged that I pointed out the fact that most of the poorest, least educated, least healthy, most federally dependent states in this country are led by Republicans, which is a fact— but when Donald Trump and Republican leaders talk shit about California, Chicago, D.C., where's your outrage? This is coming from people who actually have power. It's almost like Republicans get a blank check 
to demonize every progressive, every Democrat, blue cities, blue states. They're all shitholes. People are fleeing from them, whatever. And we just skip over that. It's almost like baked into the price of, of politics. Like we, it's okay for Republicans and their surrogates in the media to say all kinds of terrible things about not just specific Democrats, but the Democratic Party writ large. So some sooner or later, someone has to put the guns down. Okay, I am not in favor of Republicans demonizing Democrats in the exact same way. And it goes to my tweet. If you want to build large coalitions, if you want to get something like UBI passed, okay, something that I think that we will need in the future, you're going to have to get buy-in from both conservatives and progressives, and you're going to have to find a way to pitch these policies that is non-offensive to both sides. So all I am saying is you are saying things that are very offensive to the conservative ear. You probably don't even know that you're doing it. I, I understand that. Look, you, uh, plenty, of, plenty of conservatives say things that are offensive to progressive ears. I understand that as well. So I, I'm just blown away that the that fuck critique. your feelings party, that mm -hmm. you're so worried about the fuck your feelings party. I remember when Trump won in 2016, it was fuck your feelings snowflake back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I also remember when Trump lost in 2020. I remember this vividly. It was on a Fox News uh, it was one of the Fox News panels, and one of the guest commentators said, listen, Trump supporters have just been dealt a devastating defeat. We really need the Democrats to show some grace or whatever. We're just, I, we're just getting I, into I, a what about, what about ism off. I don't think it's helpful. I really don't. Well, may, maybe you should be egalitarian in your criticism then, because where where is this tweet but for the right? That's where you lose me, because— both sides are trying to win elections and affect policy of some kind. Now, I agree, the Republican Look, policy— if you want me to tweet this out with Michael Knowles and— and, and the, It might be the, helpful the equivalent. because all the people— I'm more than happy to do it, okay? That's, that's the, like— I don't understand done. why it's not your instinct, especially if you say that because, you have a right-leaning audience because and Because I am on the wait, left. Wait, 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 I already wait, wait, said that. I, wait, Look, wait, wait. a conservative doesn't wait, 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 give a fuck about what I feel. Okay, wait. You point to like a single tweet. If you were to go back on my Twitter timeline, you'd see that one of the tweets I made a couple of days ago was all about how the narrative around the I Biden investigation the Hunter and Biden the Devin, stuff. I yeah, loved and the Biden. Devin Archer testimony was bullshit. And if you actually read the Devin Archer testimony, I in did. my opinion, it's evidence that that he didn't fire show. Yeah, it's a, it's exculpatory story. evidence, one hundred. Right. I mean, I just, yeah. it's it's just you're I, you're like painting this weird view of Adam that is not at all like not realistic at well, all number one we Adam talk about you. on our show at all we constantly criticizing the mm -hmm. right on our show much to a lot of right wingers in our audience getting mad at us we lose we've like when we cover the january 6 hearings i think we probably lost like 500 or a thousand live viewers permanently from our audience for that and I'm, we always and i always get thrown the the label of tds so it just it really kind of bothers me that and first of all i thought we were going to be arguing something specific i don't know why we're arguing about like adam doesn't do enough to complain about like the right, which is not even remotely true. So there's just this weird conversation that we're having in the first place. Well, it, it's, it has been a meandering conversation, but all I've just said is, listen, again, I don't agree with vilifying conservative voters. I'm number, number one and is a general practice, well, right? Well, you're telling me again, I don't do it enough. Well, no, I'm saying that I don't think you criticize the right enough. I, I, you, I don't understand why there's- You're literally asking me to vilify people in a tweet. I mean, that's, that was your request. I'm, well, if you're going to vilify, shouldn't you be even handed with it, especially if you're a centrist? That's where look, I'm confused. It's look, like you, yeah, are you, we, you. Are we talking about vilifying conservative pundits instead of. Or that, pundits? because I imagine that's. The I, tweet I, that I already he's... look, I already answered this question. I'll say it again. When okay. we have people listen to our show, it, it comes off. Obviously, I talk about fucking UBI. I talk about MMT. I talk about universal health care. Everyone knows I'm a fucking liberal. OK. They, so every single conservative in our audience is not going to take my opinion seriously because they're going to say he's not one of us. So why am I trying to like be something that I'm not to these people to, uh, to try and win them over? It's not that's not going to be feasible. Obviously, you're going to criticize your side more because you feel like you have a bigger influence over them. That's why I'm criticizing the left. I'm saying this is ineffective and we should go in a different direction. I'm wait. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Uh, is most of your audience right wing or left wing? I most, thought you were. I thought you were. Most most of our audience is probably right wing. It's probably sixty 
40. Then right you wing. curry more influence with the right. Only you because the left the right has accountable. only because the left has mischaracterized us as right wingers. So left people have a trepidation about watching our show because we've been wrongly mischaracterized. Um, I can explain to you, Josiah, they are not a political uh, show like David Pakman would be. They mm -hmm. are very specifically a comedy show, but they do cover <laughs> politics and current news. And they always make it clear um, their big inspiration for starting a YouTube channel was from the Disney movie Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> <laughs> that is everything you said. So is much true. sense. Ohana. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, all of that is not true. Sitch, we're live in front of <laughs> Destiny's audience. This is a comedy so, show. Look, okay? if you what want you that mean? meme to spread, you just look, you have to tell everyone. I kind of do want that meme to spread. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. A anyway, yeah, yeah we, we do cover politics. I mean, we cover movies and stuff like that, but I just, I'm more interested in what the truth is. Like, I, I'm doing this because I find it interesting to talk to people. I feel like, I feel like truth springs from debate among friends. And so much of this space is debate among bitter fucking enemies. And no truth is coming out of it. And it's disparaging. It's demoralizing. I don't like it. I, we're arguing a lot on a topic that I don't think we necessarily disagree <laughs> yeah. on. I'm trying to figure yeah. out where the disagree is. I but think we all agree that you probably shouldn't just lambast people as racist. I think okay. we all agree on yeah. that. We do. Um, but that sometimes it might be appropriate to use the word, which I think all of us agree with that. Yes, totally. Yep. Agreed. So I don't know what, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.